New manufacturers have told NASCAR they are interested in joining, but they will not be building a pushrod V8. Welcome back to Break Hard. My name is Matt, and yes, you heard me correctly. New manufacturers have said they are not interested in building pushrod V8s if they were to join NASCAR, which is, you know, unfortunate. Apparently, they just hate bald eagles and freedom, but they do know what a kilometer is, so there's that. NASCAR Senior Vice President of Competition, Elton Sawyer, went on the Dale Jr. Download this week, and he talked about a litany of things, from his driving career to hybridization to potential new manufacturers. And on the topic of new manufacturers, he said that a number of manufacturers have spoken to NASCAR. They're interested in NASCAR. They really like what the Gen 7 platform is. They like that it's a spec chassis. One thing they do not like are pushrod V8 engines, and they have said that is a non-starter for them. If they were to join, they would not be building pushrod V8s. I know a lot of people are going to get mad about that. It's the engine that NASCAR is built off of. It's been the core of their existence since the absolute beginning. Of course, Hudson Horton had an inline six. We know the Bush series ran V6s uh, basically, what, from 82 to like 94, I believe, is what it was. So, yeah, there's a precedent that, you know, not everything has always been a V8, but that's what the Cup Series has essentially been built off of, at least in the modern era. So to go away from that is interesting. The more interesting part is the fact that we could be looking at multiple engine formulas if Honda, whoever, were to join. We know NASCAR has had deep discussion with Honda. They could potentially be leaving IndyCar for NASCAR, which sucks for IndyCar, but you know that's kind of on par for IndyCar's current management regime over there. So what would multiple engine formulas look like? Well, you could have your naturally aspirated V8 that we currently have, your naturally aspirated pushrod V8, Chevy, Honda, Toyota, or Chevy, Ford, and Toyota are currently using. Then you could have a twin turbo V6, because that appears what Honda is interested in using. That's what they have in their IndyCar. That's what they have in their Acura GTP program. Why not try to take some of that technology, especially on the GTP side, and use that for what would eventually become a NASCAR Cup Series engine? Maybe you could do a smaller V8 with a turbo on it. We've seen some people attempt that in WEC. You know, there's a couple different formulas that you can break down here. And essentially, you can get them all to come out to 670 horsepower. The problem there is how that power range depends on or varies from different engine type to different engine type. And that's where another portion of this comes in. And that is the term balance of performance. If you're a sports car fan, an IMSA fan, you absolutely cringed right there because balance of performance, while necessary to keep a level playing field, is less than ideal. So essentially what you're looking at here is on a race by race basis, the governing body looks at, you know, who has the better performance advantage and then they can make adjustments as they see fit. Add weight to this one, add reduce power from this you know, to try to level this playing field. Sometimes it works well, sometimes it doesn't, and you see one car just absolutely run away with it. I'm still convinced that the BOP was very much in Ferrari's favor last year at the 24 hours of Le Mans, but that's a story for a different day. I'm not sure NASCAR fans are ready for BOP. NASCAR fans right now already freak out when you adjust the arrow a little bit, or, or if you want to run a different tire compound, they, they lose their minds. If the race is on FS1, oh my gosh, we're going to riot in the streets. A BOP, I'm just not sure if they're ready for it. So if you think back to Richmond earlier this year, Martin Truex Jr. ran a torque sensor on his number 19 Toyota Camry. And at the time, NASCAR said that they were using that to collect data points to kind of get an idea on the power that's coming out of these engines. Meanwhile, everybody, thanks to Bozy on Twitter, if you don't follow him, give him a follow, was like, you know, that's the same torque sensor that they're using on GTP cars in EMSA's class, Premier class, to, you know, kind of determine what the balance of performance is, see who's where with what. It was never about gathering data. Well, it was, but it was also about trying to see how they could look at this in real time. So that torque sensor is certainly setting up, um, you know, laying the groundwork for what could potentially be a really interesting engine formula for the Cup Series come 2026, possibly even 2027. Now, people are going to get mad about this. They're going to be like, we don't need V6s in this. We don't need to cater to what Honda wants, this and that. I completely, I can understand that argument 100%. At the same time, though, these OEMs are using NASCAR as a marketing platform. And right now, currently, the Toyota Camry, you cannot buy the production car version without a hybrid engine in it. And they're running a pushrod V8 in the Cup Series. There's no marketing there other than the fact that you can be like, hey, look, this is a Toyota Camry. Nothing else on it is something that you can get. Obviously, you can still buy a Mustang with a V8 engine. You can, well, you can find a Camaro <laughs> with a V8 engine in it. Of course, it's been discontinued. Um, so you have those options available. 
At the same time, though, these car companies would love to have something that they could promote. Ford would love their drivers to get out into victory lane if they can ever find victory lane again, since they're still over on the season in all three NASCAR National Series. They would love for them to get out in victory lane and be like, yes, this Ford EcoBoost engine carried me to victory today. They would love to hear that because they love putting that EcoBoost in everything. Same thing with Honda. Honda wants to come in and have their driver get out and be like, yeah, the, our twin turbo V6, whatever they call it over there, you know, carried us to victory, had enough power to get us here, this and that. Chevy, who knows what Chevy's doing at this point? I don't think Chevy even knows what they're doing. If they have a Cadillac, they're going to get out and be like, yes, this V8 carried us to victory, that type of thing. And then Toyota, again, another company that has absolutely doubled and tripled down on hybrid technology and said basically a, a will power double bird to to evs they would love to promote their hybrids they can't because they got a push rod v8 and a camry which you've never been able to get so you can understand from a marketing standpoint these car companies would love to have a different engine formula something that is applicable to what their road going counter part is and unfortunately at the moment there's just not all they they can get out and be like oh yeah this ford mustang this Cam uh, camaro this camry because you can go buy those and for everybody that says, oh, they're all just the same car with different stickers on them, I, that tells me that you have not been to a NASCAR Cup Series race or you just don't have eyes. Because if you're Stevie wondering your way around, you might think that. But if you would just open your eyes for a second, you can see that all three of the front ends of these race cars are vastly different. Point proven last week at Kansas when everybody was like, the splitter on the five car sticks out further. No, it's the same splitter. The front end of the Mustang, that front bumper area, forms to what the Mustang looks like. Yeah, that's why it sticks out and only has a little bit of splitter showing. Where the Camaro, molded to what the Camaro looks like, sticks out further. All these cars' front ends are vastly different. And if you haven't seen them up close, definitely go take a look. Because you cannot tell me that they're all the same and they just put different stickers on them. The rear end of the race car? Yeah, don't get me wrong. All those are very, very similar. But that front end, basically from, what, A pillar to the nose. Those are all very different race cars compared to each other. So, multiple engine formulas. Hybridization. That was talked about, too, by Elton Sawyer. And it sounds like 2026, maybe 2027. The OEMs want that. It's something that they, that they want, like I said, from a marketing standpoint. The Gen 7 car was built with a hybrid component in mind. There's already a space for it. The transaxle can handle, I think, up to another 200 horsepower or 260 horsepower, something like that. So all of the parts are already available to put it in. It's just kind of comes down to an implementation as well as a testing sort of schedule and what they want to figure out with that. Of course, they kind of need to dial in what their next engine formula is going to be because I don't think we're going to see the current NASCAR Cup Series engine formula made it up with a hybrid system. It was supposed to happen this year, 2024. Obviously, it didn't happen. So now it's been pushed to whenever the next engine formula gets agreed on. Could we still see the v8 paired up with a hybrid component absolutely and honestly i'm fine i'm more than fine with that it means more power one thing bozy brought up on twitter that's really interesting is especially on ovals because the only way to get the battery to regen is to be off throttle well if you're at a intermediate track or a super speedway how do you regen because these cars are basically full throttle all the way through the corner so it'll be interesting to see how that plays out but for the most part this is just the next evolution while we might not be super psyched about it, it does lead to an interesting, you know, scenario. Is a V6 twin turbo quicker than the naturally aspirated V8? And is this naturally aspirated V8 with a hybrid component on it going to sound like the Cadillac GTP? Because if it does, I'm here for it. It sounds like the gates of hell open every time that thing switches from electric to gas. And I would love to hear a pit road of NASCAR cup cars sound like that pulling out of their pit stalls and then just you're welcome for the sound effects. Let me know in the comments what you think about this. Like and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on TikTok at BreakHard, Instagram and Twitter at BreakHardBlog.